Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Well, two months after Egypt's military ousted the country's first democratically elected president, Mohamed Morsi, accusing the Islamist leader of violating his mandate, hopes of a political resolution to Egypt's crisis seem to be fading fast. After arresting thousands of Morsi supporters, most of the members of his Muslim Brotherhood, critics say the new government has now stepped up speedy military trials and closed down many satellite TV networks, networks sympathetic to the Islamists. Now, Morsi and other top associates have been ordered to stand trial on charges of inciting murder. Now, the army says it has absolutely no interest in government in governing. It's pledged a prompt return to civilian democracy. That's all it wants. But do such promises hold really any weight after a bloody crackdown that has killed hundreds of people in a society that now seems to grow more polarized by the day? Well, my guest could help perhaps sort out some of these questions. Welcome to our studios, uh, Yasmin uh, Farouk. You are a teacher of political science and international relations at Cairo University. But you've seen basically every side in this conflict. You participated in the 2000 revolution, the one that overthrew Hosni Mubarak. Then afterwards, you also worked as an advisor, as part of a think tank in the first government after Mubarak. And then you went on also under Mohamed Morsi's government. Uh, and so you were an advisor into both. You had a, a very broad bird's eye view. I want to ask you about right now what we're seeing today in society. No matter what you thought of Hosni, Hosni Mubarak, you can argue he, his administration, never killed or jailed as many Islamists as we are seeing right now with this new military-led government in Egypt. Uh, I don't think that this is true, because during the 1990s, when you had um, a wave of terrorist um, operations in Egypt and attacks, especially in Upper Egypt, so in the south, but also in Cairo and Alexandria, it was all over. A lot of Islamists, so radical Islamists, were actually jailed, and it was really a radical way of dealing with them. It was either being killed during the operations of attacking them or jailed. Uh, but these were the most radical elements. And still the Muslim Brotherhood were subject to military trials under Mubarak. They were subject to jail under Mubarak. So I wouldn't say that this is, uh, there's a, um, a huge increase in the number of arrests, but um, it's the same, dealing the same way, actually. Dealing the same way, but you would agree, presumably, that this is in a much shorter time period. I mean, we were talking about, you know, a decade or a little longer under Mubarak, under which the Brotherhood was targeted like this. This is two months we're talking about. It is true, but however, I think we sh you should think of it in Egypt in terms of the political process in waves. So whenever you have um, a significant political incident uh, that would involve the Islamists, you would have a wave of arrests, a wave of military trials, a wave of um, indicting them for crimes, for several, mm. several crimes. So you had it right after the murder of uh, Sadat, for example, and that was under Mubarak, and then right. you had it in the 1990s, and then you had... You had it back again in the 2000s. So maybe it is just because right now there is a lot more transparency and a lot of more pe activists we're and more people about it. talking about it. We're, yeah, we're hearing. And with so many outlets, of course, to talk about it. Yasmin, but we are seeing um, a widening crackdown, more and more Muslim Brotherhood uh, leaders being arrested, sidelined. Do you see any hope at this point that they can be remain part of the political process, that they can be players on the political stage in Egyptian society? I believe, yes, they can, because let's remember that the Muslim Brotherhood, they are the most organized political movement right now in Egypt, still after two years and still after the crackdown on them. They're used to this. So, yes, they are used to this. They're used to working in that way. And you cannot marginalize them. You cannot just choose to marginalize them. So I guess, uh, and of course, calls have been made even after the ouster of Mohamed Morsi for them to be players in the same game again. But they just did not accept the fact of the way Mohamed Morsi was actually uh, ousted from power. And up till now, uh, in all the negotiations, they still their main demand is to return to power, which is something that would never happen, actually, You today. don't see any possibility of that. We still do have protests every week, every Friday. After elections, yeah, maybe they would return to power after after new elections, but they want to return to power and then have the elections, and this is the main deadlock right now in the negotiations. But how, devil's advocate, how do they return to, how do they even campaign at this point? Their spiritual guide is now, he's been arrested. Mohamed Morsi, as I said, is on trial on charges to incite murder himself. Where are the leaders? Where are the visionaries? Who is going to campaign for them? Well, it is true that, again, 
the way the authorities think is that whenever you jail the leaders, uh, you can influence um, the base of them or, or the, the militants, which is partially true. However, now they have a, a, a main demand. We want to go back to power because Mohamed Morsi had won the elections in, in a legitimate way, which is impossible to happen. So right now, the problem is that actually when you jail leaders, you do not have someone to negotiate with. And this is something I, I was against personally, because you jailed all of them. They are in a position of weakness. Now, how can you can negotiate with them on, on an even ground? There's no one to go to right now. However, however, there can still be negotiations. So, for example, you have the Salafis, uh, which are a, a more conservative branch of the Islamist movement in Egypt. They are trying to, to, to play the role of a mediator. So right now, um, and after the outer of Mohamed Morsi, they have been trying to be mediators. And I'm not, I, I don't see it as, as a deadlock, maybe for now, on the short run. However, they will remain a part of the political scene. Somehow. Okay, hopeful, hopeful sentiment there. Yasmin, you yourself, a personal question for you. We heard a lot about Egyptians who supported the military in its, in its ouster of Morsi because they just believed he had really, really made things worse for the country and something had to be done. Personally, having seen both the governments from the inside a little bit, how did you feel when you saw this ouster underway? Did you have any reluctance, hesitations about it? Were you behind the military? I was not behind the military, and yet I was not behind Mohamed Morsi's rule either, because since I've worked in the government, I have seen the state really becoming dysfunctional on all levels, on the level of the bureaucracy, on the level of the institutions, and it was not just bureaucratic resistance mm. to Mohamed Morsi, because you have the thesis, especially in Western media, saying that the state was not cooperating with Mohamed Morsi's rule, and this is why it was impossible to govern Egypt. This is not totally true. Partially, yes, of the course. The state was not an obstacle to Morsi. They were not blocking his no, attempts. No, no. It was his, uh, his and his government's lack of competence, of expertise, and their state of denial for the need to competent people, to this old bureaucracy. But l let me just take point with that. There, there are a lot of people who will tell you that they're, from the very beginning of Morsi coming to power, many people on the inside really wanted a return of the uh, of the of old regime they felt they felt that it was absolute catastrophe having the islamists come to power and they were bent on seeing his downfall yes however you cannot say that everybody who worked in state institutions or in the egyptian bureaucracy felt that way but key ones the courts the media the judiciary the police yeah but you also have to see how he dealt with them he did not try to have the right approach. He did not try to co-opt them, if I'm going to use this word, which mm. is not uh, necessarily positive. But you could have done it during the transition. You had some elements inside the Egyptian bureaucracy who were with Mubarak, who wanted to see the Brotherhood fail. That's for true. And not because they were the Muslim Brotherhood. It is because they wanted Mubarak back. They wanted the benefits they had on, under Mubarak. Right. They had some kind of personal loyalty to people who were ruling under Mubarak. Self-interest. Yeah. However, you had another part who was actually ready to work with the Brotherhood. But but the Brotherhood had some kind of paranoia because I have worked there. And they just chose people according to a loyalty okay. criteria. There's an expression in English we say, cut someone some slack, in the sense of, think of the Brotherhood. They were sidelines for so many decades from politics. True. Finally, they're elected, actually legitimately elected. True. They're intoxicated with power. Was anyone willing to give them the benefit of the doubt? Um, Let's say that um, at the beginning, yes, meaning that at the beginning, everybody was saying, OK, they are ruling. They can choose who to work with. The issue was not them choosing a brotherhood or a non-brotherhood. Mm. The issue was, was it a competent brotherhood they were choosing or not? That's the thing. When you do not have enough competent elements inside the brotherhood, you should have looked elsewhere, something they did not do. Uh, well, you're, you're, what you're really saying is Egyptians shouldn't have elected Mohamed Morsi if he wasn't competent. Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, in a country where we haven't been either uh, politically educated or and we did not practice political participation since over at least 60 years since Nasser came to power in 1952. So you cannot expect people to make the right choice since the beginning. So, But then what the people basically who are still saying that whatever you think of it, this ouster was justified, they are basically saying they have a right to override the decision of the people because they were politically uneducated and made the wrong choice for Egyptian society. I think we should, I, we should uh, 
Personally, I thought that Morsi should have stayed, but Morsi as a person, because he was the only elected person in all this. He, Morsi was elected. However, his incompetent, completely incompetent government, incompetent government, with all the bureaucracy, all the top bureaucracy leaders he had appointed, they were not elected. And they were not people who were supposed to have political legitimacy, but they were supposed to be competent people able to run the country. However, again, as you said, they were intoxicated with power, and they, they wanted the brotherhood to rule more than govern. They just wanted to rule, and they did not think how could we make the state function. This is why they went into clashes with the judiciary they, uh, and with, other, with, with the media and whatever you want. So again, the people, personally, I thought that Morsi should have continued. But those who were under Morsi, and this was the demand made to Morsi 100 times. Mm. saying it was the initial demand was not the ouster of Mohamed Morsi, it was changing this government that could not govern the country, and he did not want to do it. Okay, one word, because we're out of time here. Do you think this military will be able to restore civilian democracy, as they say? Very quickly. Uh, it's just to wait and see. I would not say yes. Okay. I just <laughs> yes, we, we call that sitting on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. No, I don't worry. It's a very difficult question. I don't think anyone has all of the answers to it. But listen, thank you very much for being with us today. You're a teacher, uh, political science, Cairo University. You uh, worked as an advisor under both of the governments after, under Morsi, right before Morsi, and you were part of the revolution itself in the streets. Thank you very much thank for sharing your views today. It was a pleasure. And thanks to all of you for watching the interview here on Fonsfankat. Thank <laughs> you.